I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, really appreciate everybody joining us uh, tonight as we kind of talk just hoops, talk mountain basketball for for about an hour and uh, kind of where we are right now and what the prospects look uh, heading into to next season. I uh, really want to thank Coach Engelstad and Coach Marcosano uh, for, for joining us tonight. Also, I want to thank all of you guys for joining us and hope uh, everybody's healthy, safe, and uh, you know, managing it, uh, managing these tough times uh, the best that they can. Uh, I, we all know that it's uh, you know, been challenging uh, in, a, in a lot of different ways, and you know we want want what's best for uh, for all of our all of our alumni, fans, uh, all of our mountain community. So we really appreciate you showing the support tonight by by jumping on and uh, kind of listening to uh, what uh, what our head coaches have to say. So just a little rundown of the evening. Um, we just ask that everybody stays stays muted while the coaches talk. Um, they're uh, they're going to do their thing. Uh, they're going to talk for about ten minutes apiece, just kind of about um, how they're handling this situation, what's going on um, at the mount. Uh, looking forward to what's kind of what's going to take place over the next uh, couple months into the season, what the season looks like, recruiting, those type of things. Um, then we're going to do a little raffle. Uh, we, we got three raffle items. The first raffle item, which will occur, will be uh, Mount Gear. Uh, then we'll take some questions, and then we'll do uh, we'll go down the questions that you guys um, gave to us uh, when you registered, and then we uh, will do two more raffles at the end. Um, it should take about an hour. We're also going to hear from our athletic director, uh, Lynn Robinson, here in a minute uh, as well. So. Uh, really, again, appreciate you guys joining us and uh, look forward to a, a fun evening of uh, talking mountain hoops. So I'm going to let Lynn uh, take it from here a little bit and just kind of give a, you know, she just wanted to, wanted to say hi and uh, kind of give a little rundown of what's going on at the mountain. So open up to Lynn. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for organizing this. As I was scrolling through, it's just great to see so many just friends and teammates and, and just great mount people. Uh, who've been part of our lives for many, many years, alumni, current players, former players, coaches, everybody. So hello to you all. I, I, first, I just hope that you and your loved ones and your families, I just hope everyone is, is managing and as well as could be expected, um, staying healthy, keeping safe. And this has been a, a, uh, a crazy world that, that, that we live in. And it's, it's, you know, I know everyone's coping as, as, as much as, as, as well as we all can, and, and I hope the same is true for, for, all, for, all, of, for all of you guys. We, um, you know, when we think back to, I'm looking here at Maria Marcasano, it was the day we were hosting the conference semifinal, and there's Kayla's on the, on the phone to call too, and, and just never, could, couldn't have imagined that day then that they came in and we found out at noontime that everything was, was uh, was being shut down across the country with the NCAA, and it was just just within. You know, we have daily meetings. We had to have meetings by the hour, I think, because things were changing so quickly during during those those early uh, days, weeks, and and then now we've gone gone in, into months. But it 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 it. it I, I always talked. I've been talking to some alumni, and that I, I said, if anything that was athletics was built for, and is is the the values of resiliency that that we all try to teach our, our student athletes and that that's part of ingrained in, in our young people and, and certainly all of us has, have learned a lot about resiliency a lot about ourselves but certainly appreciate the athletics endeavor more more than ever um the arc is so quiet our fields are empty the arc is quiet it's way it's it's the campus is, is quiet so it's it's like a very long quiet summer is what was what it's been like so needless to say we cannot wait to get it back in action, to get back in action, to have our staff back, our coaches, our student athletes, and just have it, have that art coming again, have the fields going, hearing the whistles, get, having the craziness, and, and, and it's just things that we, we, we really, really miss. Uh, the coaches, you know, who would have thought, I never heard of Zoom, I don't think before March 13th, but now <laughs> our lives are consumed with Zoom, and thank God for that, the technology that we've all been able to, to learn and embrace. And our coaches have done an amazing job being creative, not just creative in keeping in touch with each other, 
and their staffs, but with their, with their teams, with all of their teams, with recruiting, uh, you know, we have, we have so many incoming, I, I think the latest net account, we're going to have about a, a, over 190 of the incoming freshmen are student athletes. So it, it's, it's, it's amazing. And our coaches have done an incredible job staying in touch with recruits uh, and keeping them, you know, hopeful. At the end of the day, we have to be hopeful. We have to be optimistic because, uh, that's the only way we, that's the only way we, we can be, but I give our coaches so much credit about stay keeping in touch with everybody learning so much about this, this technology and sharing and the meetings and keeping our kids, keeping our kids positive and going forward. We have a one just quickly press president Tim trainer. If any of you are watching this, I'm sure you, you, you read president trainers announcements or watch his videos. We are blessed to have an incredible president and president trainers leadership through all of this has been instrumental in us being able to move forward and be positive and know that, that we're going to come out of this and we're going to come out of it. We're going to come out of it stronger. And, and we still have a ways to go. The, st the state, as some of you heard me talking to Aggie, uh, we're looking forward to the state moving to the next phase. And as each phase of, of reopening of the state, we will be right along with it and we will be ready and we'll be prepared and to welcome back our, all of the Mount students, including our student al athletes in a safe environment. Will it be different? Yep. It's, it's going to, it's, it's going to it's going to be different as it will be for for all of us everywhere. But we can't wait until that day comes. So I don't mean to. I know you want to hear talk about hoops, and I just want to thank you again for all of your support through through thick and thin. And we're just all excited for the school year to start, and always excited for hoops, always near and dear to my heart. So thanks again, everybody, and looking forward to the conversation. Thanks, Kev. All right, we're going to just kick things off with uh, head women's uh, basketball coach. Coach Maria Marcusano. It's all yours, Maria. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I want to reiterate what Lynn said. It's awesome seeing so many faces here tonight. Um, appreciate you guys joining us. I have a ton of stuff to talk about, so bear with me a little bit. Got a lot of notes here. Um, you know, hopefully the next hour, you know, everyone can smile and kind of get away from the, the harsh realities of the world we're dealing with and just um, be excited about Mount Hoops for a little bit. You know, I'm going to start kind of where Lynn, Lynn was just uh, touching on. Uh, way back that day when we found out that, you know, our season was over. Um, and, and the hardest part about that was it was just over. You know, it was uh, – we had no closure. Um, it was a very emotional day. I remember sitting there in that head coach's meeting, and Lynn was trying to give us the updates, and I'm sitting there seeing all these conference tournaments shut down while we're still supposed to play that night. Um, and we had worked so hard for home court advantage, and we were playing in the semifinals on our home court. Um, and then to, you know – we saw it was going to be inevitable. We saw Big Ten. We saw SEC. All these conferences started shutting their, their tournaments down. And um, we didn't want to believe it. We knew it was coming. And um, ultimately, um, you know, found out our, our, our tournament was over and our season was over. Um, and very, very tough day. We ended up calling the girls over about an hour before they should have for their shoot around. Um, and like Lynn said, very emotional, a lot of tears. Um, you know, you guys know as well as we do how much um, hard work goes into a basketball season. We start in the summertime. It is such a long season. Um, and to grind it out from July um, all the way to March and just find out that it's over. I, I, I hate to say that it would almost have been better to lose because then we would have had closure. But um, that was just kind of the, the toughness of it. Um, but ultimately, we weren't the only, the only team going through that at that time, um, you know, Everyone's going through it. We knew that um, it was a tough time. There were bigger issues in the world that day. And our kids are great about that. They understood that. Um, so it just took some time, you know. They sent them home. Um, they said, you guys are headed home. And we didn't know at that point that, um, you know, we were going to finish the, the semester online. So a lot of our girls didn't even move out at that point. Um, so they went home. Um, you know, when the, when the season's over, even when it's just a normal season, you know, we usually take a good two weeks to decompress. Um, so those first 10 days, you know, when they went home, it was just all of us was just like took a deep breath and dealt with our emotions, our emotions of uh, we didn't get to, to seal the deal. We didn't get to even try. You know, our season's over, everything we worked for. Um, but then eventually they came around, um, found out that they were going to start online classes. Um, not going to say that there were a few complaints initially, but I'm very proud to report, and I'll brag on them a little bit. Um, we had seven kids on the dean's list. Um, one of our highest GPAs in a long time. We had a 3.5 team GPA. Um, uh, shout out to Bridget Burkhead and Michaela Watkinson. Perfect semesters. 
Um, so ultimately, and we had out of 13 kids, we had 12 kids with above a 3.0. So while they did complain about the online classes, uh, initially our kids did a great job adjusting. Um, our assistant coaches did a great job checking in with them, staying on top of them, staying on top of them, making sure that they were getting the help they needed if they needed help from home. Um, so, I mean, like I said, they adjusted well. We dealt with our emotions. It still stings to this day, but I think we're just going to use that as fuel moving forward because one of the factors uh, for us that's a little bit different is we don't lose anybody. So there's a lot of teams that went through this. You know, they went through, they got to their conference tournament, didn't get to finish it, and they might have graduated one or two key players or just graduated anybody. Um, and the only player that we graduated this year was a red shirt anyway. She was, she was moving on. So um, in terms of players that played, we didn't lose anybody. So we're going to use that as motivation uh, moving forward. Um, and hopefully it will help us, you know, be even, be even stronger next year because we're going to add freshmen to that mix. And, and like I said, we, there's a ton of teams throughout the United States going through this, but we have that one positive that we can take that we get everyone back and we get another go at it. So for the last eight to 10 weeks, what have we been up to? Um, our kids, online classes, um, you know, trying to work out, trying to stay motivated, trying to utilize outdoor courts, home courts, um, virtual workouts, um, trying to keep it, you know, you know, not to bore them, you know, and that was one thing that we talked, we talked about a lot, even with some of the um, speakers that we heard, um, you know, they said, don't focus on that right now. There's bigger things in the world. Just make sure they're staying active, make sure their mental health is good. So we haven't really harped on them too much about that until recently. Their summer, summer workout plan actually started this week. Um, us coaches over the last eight to 10 weeks, we've done a lot of film breakdown. Um, there's been a lot of clinics online, a lot of virtual um, X's and O's talks. Um, we've worked out, um, watched more TV. I'm not a big TV person. I've watched a decent amount of TV, but we've used this to get better as a coaching staff as well. Um, another thing we've been doing is a lot of virtual recruiting. I know Lynn talked about that as well. Um, we've had to adjust this period of time, um, especially for us with, with having a big, a lot of scholarships in the next class. Um, this period of time would normally be a huge time for a lot of visits and on campus unofficial visits. So we had to adjust and try to create basically an unofficial visit virtually. Um, so we've been spending a lot of time with 2021 recruits, um, trying to show them, you know, our campus virtually through videos, through pictures, um, as good as we can. We've had, you know, a decent amount of success with it. It seems like they're going really well. The recruits are very appreciative of it. You know, we'll, we'll see. I think it's going to depend on if AAU gets to, gets to be played this summer. Um, if, it'll, if that'll be the norm the rest of the summer or if we'll eventually get to have some visits. But um, so, yeah, we've been doing a lot of that. Um, Dan and I and, and Lynn and K-Rob, we've all been um, on the committee, one of the committees that Lynn had touched on. Um, we're on the obviously the athletic specific um, committee, but there's a ton of information to go through. We're doing a lot of research, um, just trying to focus on the safest ways um, to get our kids um, back on campus, get our kids back training again. Um, you know, it's, our kids have probably had the longest break they've probably had in the last 10, 10 years of their life. Nobody gets 10 weeks off like this. So there's so much that goes into planning to have them back on campus from a training standpoint, but also from a facilities, obviously from a virus standpoint. So we've been on that committee, um, doing a lot of research, um, trying to figure out the best ways um, to go about that come fall or really come summer. We're really hopeful that we'll have them back for summer workouts in July. Uh, speaking of summer, that's the next big question. Um, you know, obviously, uh, as, as a coaching staff, we've been talking a lot about, you know, we really want to get them back on campus. I think we all need that. But obviously, what if we don't get them back on campus? So we've been talking about things that we might uh, be able to do virtually with our girls, whether it be online film sessions, one-on-one um, -on -one you know, X's and O's talks. That's a huge time for the freshmen to get acclimated to our systems. Um, so that's something that we've been talking about a lot, a lot recently. I think we're really hopeful that we will get to have them back on campus um, at some point. But again, one of the things that we've been meeting on a lot. I'll touch on recruiting. I mentioned the 2021 class. Obviously, that's the, a huge focus for us uh, right now with it, that being the next class. But I don't want to overlook the fact that we have a very, very strong 2020 class coming in. Um, Four freshmen, and I'll just kind of briefly touch on them. Um, two Isabellas. The first one, Isabella Hunt from Johnstown, PA. Uh, six foot, uh, stretch four, stretch five, really gritty kid. Um, high IQ player. She kind of reminds us of Kevin Love a little bit. That's the type of game she has. Kind of an old man's game. 
Um, the biggest thing that we loved about her was her motor. You know, she never stops working. She's very gritty. Um, basketball is her life. And that's one thing we really try to recruit to our culture is kids that truly love it. Isabella Palaya out of Mars, PA. Six foot, kind of a combo wing stretch four. Um, she's one of those kind of positionless basketball players that we love here at the Mount. Can do a little bit of everything, has some length. Um, she'll be able to guard probably three through five. And offensively, she'll probably be able to play three, three through five for us as well. Um, has a little bit of sauce to her game, can shoot it. Um, you know, she's very, very fun to watch. Both of the Isabellas were actually uh, AAU teammates. Uh, so we recruited them together, and we're excited to get both of them. Uh, next one, Jessica Tomasetti out of Maryland, Germantown. 5'5", um, five, five point guard. Um, again, very gritty kid on both sides of the floor. Um, we high, Very good in pick and roll game. We love the way she plays. She shoots it. Um, shoots it really well and love to get a local kid, um, you know, on our team. And then the last one, Jada Lee out of Pittsburgh. Combo guard, um, also has some sauce to her game. Um, shoots it very well. She's the type of kid that you go to the high school game and she's passing the ball. She's a willing passer and you're thinking you probably should have just shot that. But, um, you know, she's a pass first kid. She's going to fit in great in our system. Um, we like to shoot it. We like to share it. So, um, you know, as a whole, those four we're really excited about. Obviously, we don't lose anybody this year, so uh, playing time is not going to be easy to come by, but we're confident at least one or two of them is going to break into that rotation uh, eventually. So fall future, um, next thing we're looking towards is, is, our, is the season, you know, um, get past the summer um, and, you know, get them back on campus obviously things are going to be different. Um, things are, you know, obviously with the committee that Dan and I are on, we've talked about how many changes they're going to be, but so excited to have them back on campus. Um, with that, uh, the next exciting thing to talk about is our schedule. Um, so it actually worked out pretty well for us this year that, um, you know, our schedule, even our non-conference is, is fairly local. And with everyone's budgets certainly going to be tight this year, it actually works out pretty well that we don't have any big non-conference trip, trips. Uh, so we open up with VCU, uh, one of our guarantee games. Uh, we also have JMU. We also have Maryland on there. Um, our in-state rivals, we have Coppin, we have Loyola, uh, Maryland Eastern Shore, and then we have a new home and home with LaSalle, which is going to be a good one. And then we finish out a home and home uh, with Lehigh, which um, that was a heartbreaker at our, our house this year. So we're hoping to get a little bit of payback um, up there. And then obviously, you know, it'll be interesting this year with our new 20 game uh, conference schedule. So um, for the first time ever, we're playing two conference games uh, before Christmas. And of course, of all teams, we open up with Robert Morris at home. Um, obviously, that's been a huge rivalry over the last couple of years. Um, some really good battles. I know a lot of people were looking forward to us playing in the tournament this year. So, you know, it'll be interesting. Um, those are going to be important games for us. You know, those are two home games before Christmas. It's going to be important for us to take care of business at home uh, so that we can feel, for one, have a Merry Christmas, and two, um, feel confident going into the second part of the season with conference with hopefully already two wins under our belt. Um, and then the last thing I want to touch on before I pass it off to Dan is just um, how excited I am for his season as well. Um, you know, Dan took over at, at Ground Zero a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it was not an easy situation, and they've made huge strides um, each year. They've taken big steps, um, very similar steps that we made with our program in the first two years. And with the core group of guys that they have that just work their tails off and have bought in, but those core group of guys that they have coming back and then with the transfers that they've had added on, um, they're poised to take another huge step this year, and I'm very, very excited to see them play. Um, I want to thank you guys all again for, for joining us tonight. It's awesome to see all your faces, and with that, I'll, I'll let Dan take over. Thanks, Maria. And, uh, just going to talk a little bit about Maria for a second. Uh, great job tonight, and some of my talk is going to be uh, somewhat repetitive, but – uh, it's been great watching you build your program and seeing the strides that you guys made. And uh, I had a good feeling you guys were going to be cutting down nets this year and, and know that's in your future. And, um, you know, just uh, admire you and, and appreciate your friendship. But a good story about Maria and to talk about how much of a team player she is. 
uh, recruiting is the lifeline and, and the bloodline of, of our of our sport. And we had some of our top recruits on campus one time, and a big part of the the tour and fin you finish up in that arena and you take pictures of the recruits. It's big to put it on their Instagram, put it on their Twitter, their Facebook. Um, so we get the head women's coach rush in from the top, came down with this nice camera because we're using our dinky phones, and she's got this beautiful camera. She's down here taking pictures up at our guys. They're putting the ball out, the trophy, and, uh, you know, I just, when, when she did that, it, it speaks to her and how much of a team player she is and excited to see you continue to make strides here at the Mount. But uh, great to see all of you virtually and, and to be here with you. Um, I was so excited that I put on the, the suit jacket for the first time uh, since I've been back. We've gotten used to Zoom, and, and as you know, sometimes it's it's good to look good up top. But, you know, I got Epps. I saw you were on the call. I got my NBA socks. I got my sandals. I'm nice and comfortable at the house. So um, we're, doing, we're doing well over here. As you got to see the family when we started, um, just really thankful. Uh, for them and their support during this time. It's, it's amazing that it was just 12 weeks ago that we finished our season up at Sacred Heart in a hard-fought battle and everything that's kind of um, happened since then. And, uh, you know, we've been able to connect with our guys, and, and I want to talk about them. Uh, similar to Maria, our guys had, had done a heck of a job in the classroom, and uh, we had multiple guys on the dean's list, almost everyone that's returning close to or above a 3.0. So really proud of them for taking that adversity and making it a positive. And uh, we've talked about a couple different ways we can approach this. And uh, we can either wait for the season to come or we can prepare for the season in this time. And, um, you know, there are things that we can and can't control. And for us, we can't control gym access right now. You know, we can't control the weight room. Uh, but what we can control is the connection that we can have with these guys, the leadership development. Like Maria said, the film study that we do with our young guys. And um, so we've been able to do that. And we've been able to do that through Zoom, whether it be individual uh, Zoom calls with our guys or, or group calls and uh, really working on the leadership development component. And um, for me, it, it's really been a bright spot during this whole pandemic has been the last dance. Uh, that's been really good, I know, for all sports viewers uh, to kind of dive into that. And, and we used it as a teacher. Um, this has been a great teaching tool for us. And we've looked at different uh, components at it and created discussions. And guys like Damian Chung Kui and Jalen Gibbs and Malik Jefferson and, and Nana Poku, as, as Maria talked about, our core guys that came in very reserved and very quiet to hear them get out of their shell and to hear them communicate at the level they're doing. Like Damian's demanding during a Zoom call. Like Damian was mute when he first got on the campus. So like to see that growth and development, like that's a great reward for us. And we're excited um, about what, what we've been able to do in, in the short amount of time. And, um, you know, we've led some, some great discussions and, and we've also invited some uh, we guest speakers. Yesterday we had Alan Stein, uh, who's a world renowned speaker and uh, has coached great players like Kevin Durant, uh, Markel Fultz. And this is out of his mouth, Victor Oladipo and Dan Ingolstadt. And all of our guys looked at him and was like, what? I'm a very, very mediocre D3 player at best. But um, Alan, I've known for a long time, but he, he helped uh, create a great dialogue amongst our team and, um, and also just shared a lot of thoughts about what it is to take that next step. He just wrote a book, uh, Raise Your Game, and, and it's, it was perfect timing for what we're trying to do with our program to take that next step and, and raise our game. So uh, we've been really just trying to get ahead through all of it and, and recruiting um, is such an important piece. And like Maria, uh, two days after the, the pandemic came, uh, Coach Graves, who was my director of basketball operations, I think he's on the call now, we elevated him to assistant coach. And, and Coach Matt Miller and Coach Will, like they went to campus and they took their phone around and went through all of campus and went through different uh, areas of, of, of campus. They went to the dining hall. They went to Memorial Gym. Uh, they went through PAL and, and were able to create this virtual tour um, with our perfected student athletes, which really allowed us to get ahead. Um, and, and we've now added graphics to it where we're walking through campus and talking about what happens. And, and we tell them all the time, it doesn't do it justice. Like we're not going to be able to create what the Mount feels like. We're not going to be able to create that family feel. But going through the tours, at least they get to see the beauty and we can create and talk to them about it and, and we, we do about a 20 minute presentation with them and it's really allowed us to connect with some of these recruits in a, in a little bit of a deeper way and and uh, and we've been very fortunate to to be able to get on some really good ones early and, and I think it really helped us with land some of these transfers um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the recruits here in a minute 
Um, but, you know, I'm just so thankful for my staff and, and what they've done for us and, and to help us, us get ahead during this time. And, and a lot of it is, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that we're doing virtually now and, and credit to them for, for making it possible. Um, recruits, you know, as I talked about, we, we love our guys coming back. It's going to be competitive. And that's what we can't wait to have in our program where every day is competition. We knew we needed to get more versatile. We knew we needed to get bigger at certain positions. Uh, and I think we really did that with this class. Uh, Quentin Mincy, I'm going to start with Quentin. We saw Quentin when he was a sophomore at Eleanor Roosevelt. Quentin came, uh, came into elite camp. He was athletic. He was dunking. He did a lot of things very raw. Um, the reason why I decided to pull the trigger and offer Quentin the scholarships, I saw him in the summer and got to see his versatility in play. And he had improved his ball handling so much. He's a capable jump shooter. It's an area that he's got to improve, but he can handle it. He's unique where he's about a 6'5", 6'6", frame, plays above the rim, uh, strong driver. He's a right-hand guy, but he actually prefers to drive left. So we're going to have to work with him on being able to, to drive both ways. But he's a special athlete. Um, you get him in transition, uh, the, the not arena is going to get rocking when he, when he gets those alley-oop lobs and, and able to make some big-time plays. Um, Josh Reeves, another one, really wanted to, to improve our character on our team. Josh is a high character, uh, played at South Kent Prep. Multiple NBA players have come out of that program. Um, but Josh was the leading scorer, was set to have an all-league caliber season in, in one of the top prep schools in the country. Uh, unfortunately, he fractured his shin uh, midway through the season. But before he got to that point, he was averaging about 25 points and 12 rebounds. And we use, we view Josh as a combo guard. We think he can play on and off the ball. At his high school, he had him playing more of the three and the four because he's one of the bigger, stronger, stockier guys. But we, we see him uh, being a, a big-time talent. He won a state championship at his previous school in Notre Dame in Connecticut and really excited about his addition. Um, Dakota LeFew, a young man from Georgia. We went down to Georgia for Dakota. Uh, my staff is always scouring, looking, and, and we got this film on Dakota, and we started watching. And six foot five, but plays like a point guard, can pass, facilitate, good with both hands, can read the floor, actually prefers to pass than shoot, but he has a really pure jump shot. And uh, I think it might have been Dakota's visit where Coach Marcusano uh, helped out and lend a hand, but he, but he is – uh, a special talent, um, got to put on some muscle to his frame. He's skinny right now, but he's one of those guys that, you know, I can see down the line um, having a really great career here at Mount St. Mary's. And um, a story about Dakota, the prep school world is a little bit funny. I, I found some stuff that he played at Middle Georgia Prep, um, and the rival school is TSF, the Skills Factory. And they loved his game so much, they asked him to come to Prague and play in a tournament with him. So he ended up leaving midseason with this other team to play in the tournament in Prague. And the connection I make to that is he played in Prague with our next recruit, uh, Franta Barton, who uh, came on his visit for, for homecoming. But they actually met over in Prague and created a relationship and friendship. And uh, so for us, that was pretty neat to see. Uh, from a distance. But Franta's a six foot eight. Uh, we wanted to improve our shooting. He can really stretch the floor. He's a big time athlete. Uh, he plays for a really good program. It's called Get Better Academy. And another uh, assist to Coach Marcusano, she played with their head coach at Butler and they were classmates. They didn't play together, but they were classmates. And they had a friendship. And when we were recruiting Franta, uh, I put some ease to them that Coach Marcusano had already uh, knew us and spoke highly of us, so she, she played a part in getting Franta here. And um, so thankful for, for those four freshmen that are coming in. And then we got our two transfers. And um, Mezzi Offram is the first one, GW transfer. Really excited about him. Um, coming out of high school, had a Maryland offers, Georgia Tech offers. He was very highly touted. Um, we think he's got a chance to be a, a game changer for us with his size, his athleticism, his, his playmaking ability. Um, I actually got a chance to meet him for the first time in person a few days ago. He lives uh, near Frederick, so we drove. We, we did everything virtually when we recruited, and, and we uh, kept our distance and went on a nice uh, couple-mile walk and just talked about the future of our program and where we see it. And uh, DeAndre Thomas, another young man from Samford, um, actually had been recruited by the Mount the first time around, and it was a big part in us getting him um, on, on, the, on the transfer market. He loved the campus. Um, he probably had – 15 to 18 offers out of high school, including CAA level. He ended up choosing to go to Samford, um, but we're thrilled about him. We think his athleticism level, his ability to shoot and stretch the floor, play on and off the ball should help us as well. So, um, you know, I know I just talked a lot about our recruits, but, but as you can tell, I'm excited about them to join our returners to create um, the competition that we feel is, is needed to um, take these next steps. And then our schedule, 
uh, going to be much more regional. It's going to be challenging, but we got five uh, non-conference home games we're excited about. Uh, we play uh, the bigger schools. We open up at Pittsburgh November 10th. Milan Brown, who was my coaching mentor, uh, I'm excited to go against them and get a chance to play them to open up the season. And we're, we're going to fly, if we can at that point, down to Georgia Tech and play Georgia Tech and, and uh, go get another high major upset, just like Coach Phelan and them did back in the day. Um, hop on that flight, get back home. Uh, then we have Longwood at home, McDaniel at home. During that stretch, we play Navy at home, Howard at home, and um, American at home. And then we play on the road James Madison. We play on the road at Loyola. We got to win the Catholic Clash. Um, sick of losing to them. We're going to get over the hump and take care of business this year, but we play them um, at, at Loyola this year. Uh, and then we also play Maryland, and we finally get to Philadelphia. We're trying to recruit Philadelphia. But we're getting to Philly, and we're uh, going to play St. Joe's uh, right before the Christmas holiday. So, um, again, I can't thank you guys enough for being on the call the future for Mount basketball is bright for the women's side. We're really excited about what we're building. we got a lot of work to do. Uh, can't wait to get back in the gym. Uh, but just being part of the leadership team, and I was on campus on Tuesday, and everyone was wearing masks, and, but it was just the energy was there. And seeing kids come and grabbing their clothes and, uh, and packing up, um, but just, you know, you could just, you could sense that they can't wait to get back. And most of them were juniors and sophomores, and, and we can't wait to welcome them back. Obviously, things are going to change. Um, but, you know, I can't wait to – to get in the gym with these guys. I know it's going to be different. I'll put a mask on. I'll do whatever we got to do because we can't wait to, to get this thing going. But I appreciate your time, and, and I really can't say it enough how um, thankful I am to be the head coach of, of this amazing uh, place and university with Lynn's leadership and President Trainer's leadership. And um, let's go, Mount. Oh, awesome, guys. Thanks to Coach Ingolstadt and Coach Marcusano for giving us kind of a brief summary of what's been going on. Um, over the last couple months and then kind of a look forward to what uh, expectations are in terms of uh, incoming recruits, season expectations, as well as uh, our schedule. So you guys, for, for most of you guys, that was the first insight into the schedule for uh, both teams for next year. That, that hasn't been made public. So you guys heard it here first uh, in terms of who we're playing next year. Now, first raffle, uh, this is going to be some Mount gear. Um, we'll email you, um, whoever's, whoever's name is pulled, uh, ask for your size and preference of whether you want a quarter zip, a polo, um, or jacket, all right? So, Sue Janowick, and I didn't, <laughs> so Sue, Brooke will email you. Uh, we'll get you some women's basketball gear or men's basketball gear, whatever you, whichever preference it's you have. Um, it's great. There's no way Sue Janowitz's name got pulled, Kevin Robinson. It's freaking rigged, okay? <laughs> Sue, you just haven't changed in 35 freaking years, okay? Teammates, teammates. There you go. Always, always competitive there, Aggie. I, I agree. Uh, and Diane, too. All, all Thank you. Guys, you. Like, Awesome, awesome. Well, now we, we took care of Sue. Maybe we'll take care of Aggie and Diane with our other two raffles at the end of our question and answers. It's okay. Um, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> our first question uh, that we're going to start with um, from uh, Bob O'Brien and uh, echoes um, uh, what Rick Kidwell has asked as well. What are the chances of uh, Mezzi and DeAndre playing next year? Um, and uh, yeah, we'll start with there. What are the chances of uh, Mezzi and DeAndre getting waivers and being able to play uh, for next season? Yeah, so we'll start out by both are, are going to go through the waiver process. Uh, we feel like both will have uh, the potential opportunity to be. We, we have to prepare um, with them and without, but we're doing everything we can in our power uh, to make that possible. And, and they, uh, DeAndre's case will, will be a little unique because his coach was, was let go at Samford and um, so they're, and he's about eight hours closer to home. So with everything going on, we think we have a chance, um, with the waiver there. And then, uh, you know, Mezzi, um, you know, we, we feel like we got a good chance with him as well, but we, we don't know. We got to prepare with it and without. Okay. Thank you. And then part of, uh, uh, the second part of Bob O'Brien's, uh, question, uh, any chances to get, uh, GW booked as a non-conference game? We, we've talked about, I actually talked to Jamie in a little bit today. Um, there's, a, there's a potential for, I guess, the A-10, as, as talked about, 
making an exhibition game. And Jamie and I floated the idea, and I don't know if we'd be at the Mount or at GW, of, of potentially having that game. I haven't even talked to Lynn about it. So and I don't know if that's a possibility, but if it is, I think that could, could be a great way to, um, you know, fundraise for COVID-19 and everything um, and, and help out it as well as create a, a fun environment for both programs. Great. Uh, next question is going to be for uh, Coach Marcosano uh, from, uh, from Aggie, uh, from Coach Baronado. Um, Coach, you've done a great job at the Mount. Congrats. Where is your main recruiting area? It was the first question. And then second question, are there any discussions about uh, the worst case scenario next and next season being canceled? Hopefully, hopefully things will clear up and the 2021 season starts on time and finishes with an NEC championship and an NCAA tourney bid. Coach B, good question. I think our, our main recruiting uh, areas are right above us and right below us, as you saw with this recruiting class. Um, I have from, from coaching in, in Northeast Ohio, a ton of connections in, in Western PA. So um, right above us to uh, Western PA and then Eastern PA, we recruit up there a lot. And then obviously right below us is the DMV. We always want to have a pulse on the DMV. There's a ton of uh, competition when it comes to recruiting the DMV with all the, the great schools in that area. Um, but those are our main areas, right above us, right below us. Western PA for sure, uh, the DMV per, for sure. And then obviously with the niche of us being a, a you know, a Catholic school, we'll, we'll always try and reach out when there's a kid that has a special interest in us. We, we just lost a kid from Minnesota who had an extreme interest in us just because of that. And she ended up going kind of big time. Um, so it was a long shot for us, but we're always going to take those shots when it's a kid that's, you know, a game changer. Um, and, um, you know, but we're still going to focus on the areas that, that are going to, um, you know, with girls that get homesick. We try and stay with that within that five hours. So right above us, right below us is where um, we hit we hit the hardest. And, and what was the second part of that question? Okay, uh, any discussions about worst case scenario and next season being canceled? And Lynn, you can chime in on this if you if you like. But um, yeah. go, go for it, Maria. I, don't, I mean, I don't think uh, too many discussions have 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 revolved around worst case scenarios. Um, I think. Um, for us, we're just trying to focus and prepare as much as we can that there's going to be some sort of a basketball season. I don't think, and, and Lynn can correct me, that there's been too many conversations of just saying at this point that there's not going to be basketball. Um, but for right now, like Dan touched on, we're just trying to do whatever we can do right now to be prepared for um, whatever season that comes. If it's a shortened season, a delayed season, we feel like there's going to be some sort of basketball this year, and um, we're pray praying that, that there is some sort of basketball this year for sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would, Maria, that was, Maria's exactly right. So we're, we're, if anything, we're looking maybe to, if we, if we need to modify any of the fall sports, uh, you know, as, as we look at them and their schedules. But we're, as she, Maria said, we're hoping and praying that, that things will continue to flatten out as, as, as it's been happening and that the, uh, there'll be a reduction of cases and that we'll be able to have mitigating uh, policies that we'll put in guidelines we'll put into place so that we can not just have the school started and have classes in, in person that we'll be able to go forward with with having intercollegiate athletics so we're 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 just hoping and praying and we're, we're planning as if that will, will occur so that's that's what the way we're going all right thanks Lynn uh next question is for uh coach Engelstad uh coach uh this is from Bruce Bruce Skype uh why is it why is it seen that there's a, no, a number of transfers every year uh, for out of the program, and, and that's has seemed to be the case for the last four or five years. Yeah, you know, ideally we don't we we don't want guys to leave our program, and uh, but it is uh, something that's hit college basketball. Um, there's 900 kids plus kids in the portal right now, and um, it it is the landscape. You know our our. Our goal and our mission is we want to graduate young men that feel an attachment to the program. And, um, you know, we, we did a couple of years ago inherited a, a pretty unique situation where we didn't have any upperclassmen. So the scholarships weren't coming back uh, naturally. Uh, we were excited about we got guys that are getting older in our program now. And we, we hopefully can get it to that point um, because we are building it in a family dynamic. And um, but it, it hasn't been easy. And it is hard when you when you see guys leave and, and leave the conference. Um, and we're going to do our best to, to keep the guys here and, and keep building it. But we're, we're excited about the, the group that we have. And, um, you know, we, we do feel like we have a great core cu coming back with Damian, Nana, um, 
Jalen Gibbs and uh, Malik. You know, we feel like guys that have played a lot of college basketball now, and you throw in, you know, and Colin, who, who tore his, his knee last year, and, and Naeem's now played a year, and now we got our incomer. So we do feel like we have a great core to build around, and, um, you know, we're, we're hopeful we can keep these guys for the next couple of years, and that's how you win in the NEC is you get old. And um, so that's, uh, you know, it's happening. It's just it's been a little bit slower than we'd hoped. Appreciate it, Coach. Uh, this next question is going to go for, uh, for both of you guys. Uh, so for whoever wants to jump in first, go for it. Um, this comes from Koki Adasi. Um, it's a three-part question. Uh, so how have you been able to create a competitive advantage with your team uh, during uh, the corona pandemic? What is the biggest challenge that players have to overcome during the pandemic? And are there any segments within uh, college basketball that you believe will change forever due to COVID-19? So I can go back over those questions if you need me to. Maria, you can, you can, you can take that one. Sure. Um, I'll answer the last part first. We were kind of talking about this earlier. I, I don't think that there's going to be any major changes uh, to the game moving forward as a result um, of the virus in terms of how you play the game. Like Dan mentioned, I um, mean, I'll give him credit. They, they might end up doing away with handshake lines. That's something that could potentially go away. Um, you know, in our conference specifically, we shake hands before the game and after the game. So maybe that's something that they, um, I don't know, adjust or do away with. Um, in terms of a competitive advantage, um, you know, it's kind of a little bit of reverse psychology for us. But, you know, we're for once going to be a little bit of an older team this year. Um, and we have a couple kids on our team that uh, this break was huge for. Um, you know, we have, and I'll just mention a couple of them. Rebecca Lee going to be a senior this year. Um, I think we had one doctor mention that she had 80 year old knees. And so for her, she's a huge part of our team. She's a huge, huge part of our production. So for her, this time off has, has been awesome. Um, Kayla Agintovich, another one, um, she's been through how many surgeries over the last two years on her foot. And for her to have this opportunity to um, not pound it in postseason workouts and summer workouts and, um, you know, so those, those two examples, and there's probably a couple more within our team where um, this, this time off might, might help us a little bit. Now, is that a competitive advantage? I don't know, but we are an older team. Um, so this break has, has been nice for us. Um, like I said, we, we've been able to play that young card the last couple of years, but we've got two fifth years this year and five seniors overall. So we'll, we'll take advantage of the break for sure. Yeah, uh, for us, you know, we, we've created a mentor program, uh, and I think it's made our guys have to communicate with each other even more than they probably would have if they were in campus, especially now with our uh, guys that are just graduating and joining our team. Um, we talked about some of the calls that we have. I mean, we've really broken down our non-negotiables and, and what areas of the game where we really want to make some strides in. And in the film sessions, we're having our guys kind of walk through the film with us. And um, so everybody's on the call. So I think they're getting more comfortable um, with their own voices. And uh, so I think that's where it's, we, we potentially have gotten ahead is just, you know, I, I do think we've connected um, as best we can, you know, given what, what the, the uh, circumstances and, um, so I, we, we hope that when we get back on the floor, they've seen some of this stuff now and we can put it into play. Uh, they're not going to be in any shape, but at least uh, we feel like from a mental standpoint and from a team camaraderie standpoint, we, we could have taken some big strides um, these past couple months. Yeah, and, and I think part of that question too, any challenges that your players have faced uh, during, during this time? Yeah, I mean, I touched on it earlier. I think just staying mentally positive about everything, especially – um, you know, those kids maybe going into their senior year, not getting an opportunity to have their last senior summer or their last junior spring, um, being stuck at home, not getting able to see, not being able to see their friends. Um, so challenges, definitely keeping them mentally positive. And then secondly, just staying motivated to push yourself in whatever workouts, you know, you can, you can do. Um, that is a huge challenge uh, for kids, especially for girls to get out and push themselves into elite shape. And we know as coaches, they're not going to come back in great shape. And it's not going to be necessarily their fault. Sometimes it's just very hard to push yourself to that limit. And I think during a pandemic like this, it's extremely hard to motivate yourself every single day to go out there and work really hard on something such as conditioning that might not be fun or might not be, you know, your thing. Um, so yeah, definitely a huge challenge with that. Rehab has been hard for some of our guys. Um, it's been hard for them to stick to their, um, their schedule. Uh, the other thing, too, is, you know, a guy like Damian Chung-Kui, 
who's uh, shot, uh, you know, he, he gets his shots up every single day. It's part of his routine. Um, he's now in Baltimore, and they boarded up all the baskets. So, you know, he hasn't been able to um, get to a hoop. You know, he's been able to work out and do some things. So that's hard for these guys. It's hard for them to break their routines. And um, so just trying to give them things that they can do um, in replace of that. And, uh, like, Nana Poku doesn't have a, a basket. Some guys do. You know, some guys have been fortunate to, to be able to still work out during this time and, and stay safe. Um, but just things that they can do in their driveway, and we send them workouts to, for them to just stay engaged and, and to some of their uh, weaknesses can still be improved without even getting to a court. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, next question. Um, you guys have done a great job. On, you guys have done a great job on the recruiting trail, and, but I'm sure you've lost some recruits along the way. Those top targets on your list that you lose, who do you typically lose them to? And um, are they coming from elite high school programs? This question is from Mike Mullaney. I'll go first, Dan. I, I feel like we don't have a specific school or even area that we, you know, we lose kids to. Um, I think probably with females, what we lose kids to the most is they want a high academic school. So a lot of times they'll say we want the Ivy League or we want Patriot League or whatever it may be. We've had a couple of those. Um, and then the other times it's just sometimes we just shoot too high. You know, we might lose them to the A-10 or um, like the kid out in Minnesota. She went high major. She ended up, go, you know, picking Utah. So, um, you know, we don't have a, a specific um, school that we lose kids to the most. But I would say with, with the females that we've recruited, we do lose, lose them to, for academic reasons more than anything. Yeah, we were fortunate enough this year to hit some of our top guys, but we missed on a couple and, and – uh, like Maria said, there, there's young people are, are searching for potentially levels. And, and when, um, you know, for, for us, if we go against an A-10 school or we go against a, a top CAA school, um, we're going we're gonna to roll up our sleeves and fight it and, and do everything we can. And we do have some things that separate us here at the Mount. Like President Trainer will meet with the recruit and their families, and, and we do everything we can in our power um, to, to explain how special the place is. But, um, you know, we did lose a young man this past year to Charleston. Um, and it was it was close. It came down to us too. But uh, you know that, that sometimes it, it's hard to, to to beat those levels out. Thank you, guys. Next question comes from Bob Rudd. Uh, what will constitute a successful season in in 2020-21, both in terms of goals and wins? Well, I, we really try and stay away from uh, expectations like these. You know, we, um, you know especially in the past, especially when you're turning a program around. But I think if you ask our girls, you know, a successful season this year is winning a championship and probably nothing short of that. Um, you know, we don't want to sell ourselves short, but we know what we're capable of. We know we're returning everyone. And our kids are so hungry because we didn't get that opportunity last year. So I think um, for this coming year with us having, you know, five seniors and all five of them have started at some point, probably three or four of them will start this coming year. And having that experience, having that taste of postseason success, both this season and last season, and just not getting to cut the nets down. I just think, um, you know, our girls have one thing in mind. And, um, you know, if we come up short, sure, maybe we'll, we'll look back on it and say we had some successes in, in other areas. But um, in terms of an ultimate goal, I think, um, you know, sometimes it's not realistic. And I think our girls know this year it will be realistic, and, and that'll be our ultimate goal. You know, we, we want to make that next step as a program. And, uh, you know, part of uh, the progress of making the playoffs last year was a good, it was a good experience for us. We fell short of our expectation and what we wanted um, for last season. Uh, you know, we want at the Mount to always compete for championships. That's the goal year in and year out. And um, we feel very confident about our, our guys returning and the guys we got coming in. And we're going to work really hard to achieve that goal. And um, so that ultimately, that's going to be our, year, our goal every year if we want to win the NEC tournament, we want to go to the NCAA tournament, and then we want to win games in the NCAA tournament. So we're going to work really hard until we accomplish that. Oh, awesome. And then uh, one final question, and it goes to your, your background uh, there, Coach Engelstad. Uh, have you guys watched The Last Dance? And if so, what do you think of it? This question came from uh, Ed Egan. As I mentioned uh, in my talk, it, it was uh, the, the best two hours um, – of, of the weekend for me, just the anticipation of watching it and, um, you know, just diving in to, to see that time. I was, a, I was a young kid watching Mike and um, like everybody, I wanted to be like Mike and just to, to see what made him great um, and, and also see some of his flaws. 
but just to create those discussions with our guys and, and talk about uh, the Bulls team and the dynamics of that team and, and leadership and um, how they responded after losing to Detroit. You know, that was one of the things that stood out is, you know, we've, we've fallen short of our expectation. Uh, so what was their response? And for them, it was immediately get back in the weight room and get stronger so they could get past the bullies of Detroit and um, looking at Team USA and how they competed against each other and hopefully carrying over that level of competition to our practices. And these are the best of the best doing it and, you know, elevating our games. And then, you know, they got on the bus and they laughed and had a good time, but just, I think there's so much that you can take away from it and, and being ready for the moment. You know, we, we watched uh, Steve Kerr knock down a big three or John Paxson knock down a big three and being ready for that moment and being present in that moment and talking about, you know, what that was. And, and Tony Kukoc, you know, you look at Tony and, and he wasn't ready for the moment when Scotty and, and Michael attacked him the first time. And then he got a chance the second time he was more ready for it. So just talking about putting ourselves in a position um, to be uh, successful when that opportunity presents itself. But there were so many takeaways from it, um, and it was, uh, it, it was great television. Uh, but like I said, there was a lot of learning tools there for us as well. The greatest part of the last dance is when MJ tried to say, I wish I had played with so-and-so and so-and-so and, so and, so and Dr. J. End of story. <laughs> Greatest basketball player ever. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Coach Marcusano. Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in the Midwest. Um, grew up a, a, a Bulls fan, a Michael fan. Um, I had read a lot of the books, so I kind of knew a lot of the background behind the whole Jerry Krause stuff. I loved watching that. I loved to see how they teased him. Um, you know, just seeing the intricacies of that. Um, but just seeing the intricacies of all of it, you know, how Michael led a different life, his, his bodyguards. Um, you know, I saw somebody tweeted the other day that the only loss he took in the whole thing was his bodyguard beating him on the quarter throwing contest next to the wall. Um, but it was, it was very cool. Um, you know, Dan talked about how he used it with his guys. I used it with recruits. Um, for me, we want kids that love the game and there's nothing else going on right now. So if I'm recruiting a kid right now and they don't even know it's on or they're not watching it. That's a little bit of a flag for me right now. Uh, but I had a lot of good conversation with, excuse me, conversations with recruits about it. Um, you know, definitely the highlight of every weekend, um, especially growing up uh, an MJ fan and, and a Bulls fan. Uh, fantastic, guys. And, and, and thank you for, uh, for stepping up and answering those questions and for, for being here tonight. Uh, one last question, and I'll, and I'll field it just because it's in kind of my realm. Um, it's from Jim, uh, Jim Tenney. What are the plans for season tickets for the 2021 season? And what are the plans for in-person attendance at games? Uh, we're looking at all options right now uh, in terms of attendance at games. Uh, we would love for it to be packed house and not arena. We've, we've led the league in attendance the last five years, uh, well, well beyond anybody else in the league. So, you know, that's, and that's a huge advantage for both programs uh, to have. I mean, and, you know, women's basketball is on the rise, and that was evident with uh, the amount of people that were coming to games this year. We we hit some pretty high levels with uh, uh, women's basketball as well. So uh, we're doing everything in our power uh, to ensure that we can have as many people as we can at the games. Now, that's going to be dictated by uh, state, federal, and even uh, institutional guidelines that we're going to have to follow. So right now we're planning – for a full season, we're planning for 50% capacity in the arena. We're planning for 25% capacity, and we're planning for no fans. Um, we have all four options on the table, and that's why season tickets um, we'll, we'll probably hold off on uh, a little bit beyond what we typically do, um, just so that we can, you know, make sure that we can, you know, hopefully that it comes to the pass where we can have all, all fans at our games. So that's that's our goal, and. Um, be on the lookout for season ticket stuff to come out kind of towards the end of August, beginning of September, as we have a little more clarity on uh, what's going to happen for the season. Uh, so that's, that's just kind of where we're at right now with season tickets and in terms of uh, attendance at the games. Um, so if, you, if anybody has any further questions beyond that, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Brooke. Uh, we'd be happy to talk, uh, talk with you guys further. So um, we, appreciate, we appreciate it. Sue? So Coach Moran, Coach Dan, Despite what we're all going through right now, it was fabulous. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for loving the man. We love you. Thank you.
He's in well said. No, we're very yes, thank you. Maria Susan. and Dan are just how blessed are we to have them in our are amazing. basketball programs. Yeah. I got two more raffles though. I got two more raffles. So look, we're not oh, we're not please. done quite yet. We're not done quite yet. Susan, you won the Sue, you won the first one. Now we gotta see who's gonna win these next two. So this one is gonna be for um, Mount Gear. Again, uh, Brooke will email you and uh, just let her know what you uh, what you prefer and what size uh, you are. So I'm mixing them all up. I mean, there's no rabbit in any hat or anything. This one is for Miss Victoria Lee. Uh, Miss Victoria Lee. So you are our other winner for that. So uh, just uh, Brooke will be in contact with you. And then our final one, the big one, whoever's name gets picked out, once things kind of get a little bit better at restaurants, you get to have lunch with our two head coaches. All right. Uh, we'll set up a day at a time. Uh, the, most likely the carriage house in, but it, we, that could be uh, that could be negotiated. So, all right, here we go. And the winner is Megan Brzee. All right. <laughs> so we are uh, good to go. Uh, women's basketball. No, uh, we may have to check on compliance on that one. So we'll we'll uh, we'll. we'll uh, We'll, we'll check with Fred on that. I'll pull one out just in case we're not allowed to. All right, I'll pull another one out. So back up is Dave Reeder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, and I know Dave goes to lunch with uh, uh, quite frequently with those guys. That one will be easy. So um, again, thank you everybody uh, for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you taking the time uh, on, on a Thursday evening to hear from our coaches and really, really appreciate the support you're giving uh, Mount Hoops. Uh, both programs has been tremendous and look forward to a wonderful season coming up. Hopefully we can see you guys in the stands and uh, rooting on the Mounties. So go Mount and thank you.